All right, how you doing, man? I'm the 13th Wolfman. You know what? People over at Mill Creek were nice to settle with. Crawl! 1983's Crawl! That's right. Crawl. Crawl is the name of a planet in another galaxy far, far away, I guess. I mean, they don't really say exactly where it's located, but you have Ken Marshall playing uh, Callan. You got Lissette. Oh man, what's her last name? Lisette Anthony. Playing Le Lisa is her name. And what it is, is you take the idea of Romeo and Juliet and a little bit of Star Wars mixed in with, with the Excalibur and you get Krull. I mean, really. You got these two factioning families that... Neither father wants their son or daughter to marry, but they want to marry so that they could bring their, their uh, kingdoms together, which is a cool idea, which shows that the, the kids are a little bit more mature than the parents. And then you have the beast. The beast is this creature that lives in what's called the, the dark forest. But the dark forest doesn't stay in one place. It, every every morning at dawn and moves from one place to another on the planet Kroll. Uh, Lisa is abducted by the beast and Ken Marshall has got to go out find his bride and you know save the save the bride save the world you know kind of like save the cheerleader save the you know but yeah, he saves his bride. He could say, you know, he could save the world. Uh, his this the the abduction happens on his wedding day, and his father and her father get wiped out. So they they've got to find a way to bring these kingdoms together. There's an old man that is really good friends with Ken Marshall's character, and I want to say his name is Cowan. Yeah, Cal. Yeah, Cowan. I just want to make sure I'm pronouncing it right. But, um, really good friends. And he tells him, he says, you know what, if you want to defeat the beast, first thing you got to do is you got to go out and you got to find the glaive. The glaive is this five pointed, funky, star like boomerang. You know? And it's, it's a really, this movie is really cool. It came out in 1983. It was one of the most expensive movies ever made for its time. They filmed it on. They filmed it in England on in a Pinewood Studios. They used the James Bond studio, along with uh, the studio that they filmed Empire Strikes Back on. Peter Yates did the directing for this movie, and it's the only sci-fi movie he like ever did. What's that about? He did a really good job. This movie's got a great visual look to it, and the score is amazing. You get you actually get Liam Neeson and Robbie Coltrane in early roles. Liam Neeson pretty much looks the same as he does now. Honestly, does this guy age? Uh, his role's not huge, but it's not small. He's he's got a pretty good presence in the movie. And Robbie Coltrane, of course, you know. It's it's a good movie. I overall. I mean, it, it's really got a lot of a lot of uh, visual effects in it that kind of look dated from time to time. You can tell that they're on a they're next to a blue screen that when they're riding these horses, you know, and you kind of tell that the outline, you know, they're, they're running a blue screen behind them and they're they're digitally uh, uh, what do we call it back then? Superimposing is what it was called back then. They were superimposing a background onto the blue screen, and you can kind of see an outline around them to where it kind of shows that. That was that was like one of the effect, one of the side effects of using blue screen back in the seventies and eighties. You can kind of tell. It wasn't so bad, but you know. Um, overall, yeah, I give this easily three three and a quarter chainsaws. I really like this movie. I liked it back when it came out in 83, you know, and I, I think for the fantasy movie that it is, it holds up. 
really, I mean, like I said, there were some things you can kind of look at and go, okay, that's kind of cheesy. And but for the for the time that it came out, it looks pretty good. The transfer looks really really good. I I think that the picture is crisp, clear. It looks good on Blu-ray. The the sound I think is just a Dolby 2.0. I mean, you don't really get a lot of choices. There are no special features. Again, it's Mill Creek. They they try to do the budget thing, which is fine with me. I got Kroll on Blu-ray, so I do want to thank them for sending this over. Like I said, uh, three and quarter chainsaws. Tell me what you guys think. Have any of you seen Kroll? You know, comment down below. Just tell me what you guys think about this. This to me is like one of those fun movies to watch. So yeah, it's there. It is Kroll. I'm the 13th Wolfman, I'm on the prowl.